Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to start chapter eight. Ramona says a bad word. I wonder how bad it's going to be. We'll have to see. The more Ramona dreaded school, the more enthusiastic Beezus became, or so it seemed to Ramona. Mr. Cardoza had his class illustrate their spelling papers, and guess what? It was easy. Beezus, who always had trouble drawing because she felt she had no imagination, had no trouble drawing pictures of ghosts and laundry. One day, Beezus came home waving a paper and looking especially happy. For language arts, Mr. Cardoza had asked his class to list five examples of several different words. For pleasant, Beezus had listed picnics, our classroom, Mr. Cardoza, reading, and school. When Mr. Cardoza had corrected her paper, he had written thanks beside his name. For a joke, she had also included his name as an example under frightening, and his red-penciled comment was, well, Beezus received an A on her paper. Nothing that pleasant ever happened to Ramona, who spent her days circling sentences and workbooks, changing first letters of words to make different words, and trying to help Davy when she could, even though he was in a different reading circle. Then one afternoon, Mrs. Griggs handed each member of Room 1 a long, sealed envelope. These are your progress reports for you to take home to your parents, she said. Ramona made up her mind then and there that she was not going to show any progress report to her mother and father, as if she could get out of it. As soon as she reached home, she hid her envelope at the bottom of the drawer under her summer play clothes. Then she got out paper and crayons and went to work on the kitchen table. On each side of the paper, she drew in black crayon a careful outline of an animal. A mouse on one sheet, a bear on another, a turtle on a third. Ramona loved to crayon, and crayoning made her troubles fade away. When she had filled ten pages with outlines of animals, she found her father's stapler and fastened the paper together to make a book. Ramona could make an amazing number of things with paper, crayons, staples, and scotch tape. Bees' wings to wear on her wrists, a crown to wear on her head, a paper catcher's mask to cover her face. What are you making? asked her mother. A coloring book, said Ramona. You won't buy me one. That's because the art teacher who talked to the PTA said coloring books were not creative. She said children needed to be free and creative and draw their own pictures. I am, said Ramona. I'm drawing a coloring book. Howie has a coloring book, and I want one, too. I guess Howie's mother missed that meeting. Mrs. Quimby picked up Ramona's coloring book and studied it. Why, Ramona, she said, sounding pleased. You must take after your father. You draw unusually well for a girl your age. I know, Ramona said. She was not bragging. She was being honest. She knew her drawing was better than most of the baby work done in room one. So was her printing. She went to work coloring her turtle green, her mouse brown. Filling in outlines was not very interesting, but it was soothing. Ramona was so busy that by dinner time she'd forgotten her hidden progress report. Ramona forgot until Beezus laid her long white envelope on the table after the dessert of canned peaches and store macaroons. Mr. Cardoza gave us our progress reports, she announced. Mr. Quimby tore open the envelope and pulled out the yellow sheet of paper. Mm-hmm. Very good, Beezus. I'm proud of you. What did he say? Beezus asked. Ramona could tell that Beezus was eager to have the family hear the nice things Mr. Cardoza had to say about her. He said, Beatrice has shown marked improvement in math. She is willing and a conscientious pupil who gets along well with her peers. She is a pleasure to have in the classroom. May I please, please be excused? asked Ramona. She did not wait for an answer. Ah, uh, just a minute, young lady, said Mr. Quimby. Yes, what about your progress report? asked Mrs. Quimby. Oh, said Ramona, that old thing. Yes, that old thing. Mr. Quimby looked amused, which annoyed Ramona. Bring it here, he said. Ramona faced her father. I don't want to. Mr. Quimby was silent. The whole family was silent. Even Picky Picky, who had been washing his face, paused one paw in the air and waited. Ramona turned and walked slowly to her room and slowly returned with the envelope. Scowling, she thrust it at her father, who tore it open. Does Beezus have to hear, she asked. Beezus, you may be excused, said Mrs. Quimby. Run along and do your homework. Ramona knew that Beezus was in no hurry to run along and do her homework. Beezus was going to listen. That's what Beezus was going to do. Ramona scowled more ferociously as her father pulled out the sheet of yellow paper. If you don't look out, your face might freeze that way, said Mr. Quimby, which did not help. He studied the yellow paper and frowned. He handed it to Mrs. Quimby, who read it, and frowned. Well, said Ramona, unable to stand the suspense, what does it say? 
She would have grabbed it and tried to read it herself, but she knew it was written in cursive. Mrs. Quimby read, Ramona's letter formation is excellent, and she is developing good word-attacking skills. Ramona relaxed. This did not sound so bad, even though she had never thought of reading as attacking words. She rather liked that idea. Mrs. Quimby read on. She is learning her numbers readily. That mitten counting, thought Ramona with scorn. However, Ramona sometimes shows more interest in the seat work of others than in her own. She needs to learn to keep her hands to herself, and she also needs to work on self-control in the classroom. I do not! Ramona was angry at the unfairness of her teacher's report. What did Mrs. Griggs think she had been working on? She hardly ever raised her hand anymore, and she never spoke out the way she used to, and she wasn't really interested in Davy's seat work. She was trying to help him because he was having such a hard time. Now, Ramona, Mrs. Quimby's voice was gentle. You must try to grow up. Ramona raised her voice. Well, what do you think I'm doing? You don't have to be so noisy about it, said Mr. Quimby. Of course, Beezus had to come butting in to see what all the fuss was about. What did Mrs. Griggs say? She wanted to know. And it was easy to see she knew that what Mr. Cardoza had said was better. You mind your own business, said Ramona. Ramona, don't talk that way. Mr. Quimby's voice was mild. I will too talk that way, said Ramona. I'll talk any way I want. Ramona? Mr. Quimby's voice held a warning. Ramona was defiant. Well, I will. Nothing could possibly get any worse. She might as well say, say anything she pleased. Now, you see here, young lady, began Mr. Quimby. Ramona had had enough. She had been miserable the whole first grade, and she no longer cared what happened. She wanted to do something bad. She wanted to do something terrible that would shock her whole family, something that would make them sit up and take notice. I'm going to say a bad word, she shouted with a stamp of her foot. That silenced her family. Picky Picky stopped washing and left the room. Mr. Quimby looked surprised and... and and how could he be so disloyal, a little amused? This made Ramona even angrier. Beezus looked interested and curious. After a moment, Mrs. Quimby said quietly, Go ahead, Ramona, and say a bad word if it will make you feel any better. Ramona clenched her fists and took a deep breath. Guts! she yelled. Guts, guts, guts! There! That should show them. Unfortunately, Ramona's family was not... Shocked and horrified, as Ramona had expected, they laughed. All three of them laughed. They tried to hide it, but they laughed. It isn't funny, shouted Ramona. Don't you dare laugh at me. Bursting into tears, she threw herself face down on the couch. She kicked and she pounded the cushions with her fists. Everyone was against her. Nobody liked her. Even the cat did not like her. The room was silent, and Ramona had the satisfaction of knowing she had stopped their laughing. She heard responsible old Beezus go to her room to do her responsible old homework. Her parents continued to sit in silence, but Ramona was past caring what anyone did. She cried harder than she ever had cried in her life. She cried until she was limp and exhausted. Poor Ramona. Her bad word, guys, was guts. And so why do you think her family laughed at her? I mean, guts isn't really a bad word, but it kind of took the wind out of her sails because she felt so powerful and so strong and so grown up that she had this bad word to say. And then everybody laughed at her and she's feeling so frustrated. Poor Ramona. I wonder what's going to happen to her next. All right, guys, let's see. This is Friday's read a lot, is it? So I'll see you on Monday for the rest of chapter eight.